with Grow Local, and today I am at L'Ecole de Grand Cedars. I'm trying to say it right, you guys, but I'm with Xavier, and he is the grade three, four teacher here, and we are in their school garden. And what are you guys planning on doing this year? Uh, well, today we're going to plant some uh, herbs, and uh, the students have been planting some little seeds in, in the classroom that we're going to plant in the coming weeks uh, in different sections of uh, the garden here that, that we've been working on for the past weeks. And I understand that uh, even though school stops at the end of June, um, you have families that come in and take care of the watering and there will be an automatic watering session set up so that some of these things they can come back next year and enjoy? Yeah, exactly. We, we have uh, those, those little holes that we go around and we have a numeric system. And also we have uh, families coming uh, through the summer to pick up what's ready. Also, we have some veggies that we expect to be ready more in the fall. So when the students awesome. come back. Awesome. Okay. Well, today too, we are going to wait until the motorcycle goes by, <laughs> which is awesome. But we are going to stop and we're just going to talk. We've got the students here and I'm beating one of them up on the head and I apologize for that. But we are going to plant some of these herbs and some of their transplants into the garden and we're just going to see how they do. I did ask them before, how many of you guys have gardened before? All of us. Almost. And how many of you have done that gardening at home? And how many of you garden in the ground? How many of you garden in containers? How many of you just grow vegetables to eat? How many of you grow vegetables and flowers? How many just grow flowers? Awesome. Okay. Um, we do have their lovely tower of strawberries over here. And I'm going to go over this way. Can you tell me what's good or bad about a tower of strawberries? Um, the good thing about having a tower of strawberries is if you have a dog and it bumps it, it won't really fall over. Right. And do you have lots of blooms? Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? Make strawberries? Yeah. Have you got little strawberries starting already? Kind of. Yeah. They're just, just starting. And you have some transplants of your own, don't you? Mm -hmm. And they are vegetables or flowers? Flowers. Are you going to plant them today? Do you want to show me how you're going to plant them today? Can, or can you explain it to me? Um, make a hole in the ground with my finger and then slowly put the flower in. Okay. Come and show me. Pop them in the ground for me. I'll give you a hint. Mm -hmm. Are you going to take it out of that package or are you just going to put the whole thing in? Um, I'm going to take it out of the package. Okay. Tip it into your hand, you'll probably find that easier. That's it. Yep, you almost got it. There you go. So roots in, tuck it in gently. Very good. Could you, do you think you could plant that whole thing? Hmm? Do you think you could put that whole container in the ground? Would that work? Hmm. You know what? It would. It would. You don't have to do that, but it would because you are using an egg carton and it will just break down in the soil and turn into more soil. Awesome possum. And you can see she's being so gentle with it so she's not crushing the roots and she's not crushing the stems. And if you notice, she tamped on it very gently because she's putting the roots to bed, right? Getting rid of the air bubbles. Awesome. Now, I think we are going to look at some oregano. And do you have oregano? Uh, yeah. Yes. What do you use oregano for? Um, spices and yep. curry and chicken. Ooh, awesome. And do you know how to transplant that? Yes, a yeah. little. A little? Do you need some help? Mm. I think you probably have it too. Would you like a trowel? Oh, yeah. Sir, may we borrow your trowel? Yes. Thank you very much. And he's just a digging a hole here. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And if you'll notice, they've got a really good mix of soil here where it is a little bit sandy, a little bit of clay, and it looks like a good amount of compost on the top too. So these things should just thrive in here, shouldn't they? Do you think they're going to thrive? Yeah. yeah. I think your hole's getting pretty deep there. That should do you. And then he's tipping it over, pulling it out, and tucking it in. You'd almost think he'd done this before, huh? Yeah. Is oregano awesome on pizzas? Probably. Probably? <laughs> yes, it is. Oregano, you guys, is really, really good. It's one of the uh, main herbs that you're going to use in spaghetti sauces and on your pizzas. Awesome. And I thank you. All right. So now we have a gentleman here, and he has, what do you have? Rosemary. And what is rosemary good for? Um, seasoning. Yes. Stuff. Seasoning and stuff. Okay, do you want to show us how you're going to plant your rosemary? He's holding it by the root ball so that he doesn't hurt it at all. He's already pre-dug his hole. Taps it in really good. What's it smell like? Um, smell it. Rub it and smell it. Does it smell kind of piney or does it smell woodsy or is it? Piney. It does, doesn't it? Cool. All right, and you, sir, have um, lavender. And what can you use lavender for? Um, it goes into iced tea, and it's good for like relaxing. Yeah. Very good. If you have a lot of trouble sleeping, using lavender, just putting a little sprig underneath your underneath your pillow will help you sleep at night. Yeah. So would you like to plant your lavender? Um, you can. Yeah, oh, me thinks you got the big rock. There you go. I got a big rock too. Did you have a big rock too? Yeah, this is my wall. Oh. <laughs> nope. That's part of gardening, isn't it? You're never really sure what you're going to find. First year I dug up my garden, we found a bathtub. What? I know! I went, oh, this is going to be a lot of work. And tucks it in. And last but not least, I know that we have a student and they have been growing their, their uh, flowers and their veggies in peat pellets or peat pucks. And he has taken the netting off and he's going to show us how to plant his peat puck. So Rocco, are you ready to plant your peat puck? Yeah. Ah! See, you know they've got good soil when they can just dig it all up with their fingers. And tucks it in, and it's good to go. And I think that is probably going to be it for today. Actually, um, I guess I should have said, that first oregano that we planted, that was a hot and spicy oregano. And I know that, Ariana? Oh, yeah. Aria. I was close, but I got it wrong anyway. Aria has what they refer to as a golden oregano. So you just stay there because I'm going to get you to plant your guy too. So is golden oregano as strong as the other oregano or is it a milder flavor? Milder? Yes, you're right. Good, good, good. And you might find that these don't come out in a big block. They're just going to come out loose. There you go. Are these kids handy dandy or what? And I have one more fella that has been sitting here very patiently. He's had to move for almost everybody else to plant their stuff. So, sir, can I get you, what have you got in your pot? Um, I don't really know. Can you tell by what kind of a seed is on there? Does it look like it might be a sunflower or a melon? I don't know. 
Okay. Are you going to plant the whole pot or are you going to plant just the uh, seedling? Do you want to plant the whole pot? Yeah, I was going to do that. Okay. So, for, yeah, it's, it's just easier. It is easier when you've got the right tools, isn't it, you guys? And I will give you... It is funner and messier, isn't it? And do you notice that he is covering all the cardboard so that only the seedling is showing through? That is a really good idea, you guys, because sometimes that cardboard, if it's exposed above the ground level, it acts like a wick. So you will water that plant, but all the water goes to the walls of that little egg carton pot and it evaporates. And so your little plant, all the moisture will be sucked out of that little piece of soil and it'll go up into the air. Your plant will be dry as a bone. The rest of the garden might be nice and damp, but because of that cardboard and its exposure to the air, your plant dries out. But he looks like he's got a good healthy little start there. And this is the end of your class day. I thank you very much for letting me come and see your garden. Maybe we can come back in the fall and see because I was told that you guys might be growing some squash, maybe some pumpkins or things that'll grow right through the summer and then you guys can come and enjoy them and eat them in the fall when you come back to school. I think that'd be a great idea. Bye. <laughs>
it decided that it would grow these flowers every year after so people would remember don't take the path go the way you're supposed to go don't bug people but remember i said die had two pet rabbits well if you take this flower apart and you peel off this pink part there are her bunnies how cute is that so there's her bunnies Remember I said she had dangly earrings? There's one earring, and there's the other earring. <gasps> but what about her dancing slippers? She had her favorite dancing slippers. There's one, and there's the other one. And you know what? There's even the magic wand that I, that old crone used. But go find a bleeding heart. See if you can find the bunny and the earrings and the slippers and the wand. And if you don't like how I told the story, change it up and make your own. And it's Candace, and we're back with a herb pot now. I have a terracotta pot, which is going to be just fine for the summer. I have a sage, I have a rosemary, and I have a thyme. And sometimes people have a hard time putting the soil and their plants together and they get really nervous about it. One of the tricks you can do is put your pots in the pot and then put all your soil around it. Then you can pull out the pot and you actually have the depression where you know your plant's going to go. And you can pull it out. Ooh, this is a really good one for seeing how the roots are growing in a circle. So just tease them out. Pop them in there. Here is the thyme. And again, this has got a lot of roots on the, on the bottom, which is going to be hard for me to pull through, so just tear it off. It's not going to hurt the plant. It's not going to kill it. If anything else, it's going to stimulate it to say, hey, I lost some feet of roots. I need to grow some more. And a gentle tug. And again, pull some of these. If your pot doesn't feel like it's going to be deep enough, you can actually just chunk off a bunch of it and then pop it in. So like I said, don't be afraid. You don't want to take off probably more than a quarter or a third of the bottom of that plant, but it's certainly not going to kill it. And the rosemary, he's fine. Now this is a smaller pot, but there is nothing saying that you can't jazz things up. You always leave about a half inch to an inch of soil down below the lip of your plant pot because when you go to water it, you want to make sure that the water stays inside the pot. If your soil is right level with the edge of the pot, then you are, when you water it, it's just going to go over the edge. It's not going to be nice. But there are all sorts of things that you can do to jazz this up if you wanted to. You've got different colored rocks that you can sprinkle on. You've got fir bark. Typically you find that where you, um, in the orchid section, because they use a lot of fir bark, the fine fir bark for orchid mixes. And it's just lovely. But I thought for this one, I'm gonna do the white rock, I think. Just because it looks good. I like the bright. This will act as a mulch so that when I go to water it, it's gonna stay wet longer. Terracotta pots are notorious for sucking up the water and having it evaporate. So you only usually plant things in there that can handle drought or like their roots a little bit drier. Hey, I might even have enough. And there's, you can use, 
You can use bigger rocks. Yeah, let's talk while you're scraping rocks out of the bottom of a bowl so you can all hear me. But something like that, I think, I think that looks pretty. I think it looks charming. If it's not enough for you, you can tweak it up like that. You could put in a couple of really big rocks. It all depends on what you want to do. You might decide that you want it a little woodsier looking and you can chunk in a great big old piece of wood with some moss on it. Entirely up to you what you want to do. Stick in some curly twigs. Make it look, I don't know, just natural. The only thing you would have to be concerned about with this is when you cover your stuff, when you cover your plant pots with mulch, it's going to be really hard to tell when you need to water it. One of the things you can do is after you water your pot and you know it's soaked and drenched, lift it up. See how heavy it is. And that way, if you're going out in the afternoon, you go, hmm, wonder if it needs to get watered. When you pick it up and it goes whoosh, then you know you need it. Or the other thing you can do is use a bamboo skewer. These work really well. You just put it in the soil and you leave it there for about 15 minutes. Then you're going to pull it out. If it looks wet or you've got little pieces of soil sticking to it, then you know there's enough water in there, leave it alone. If it comes out looking brand new and dry, then yeah, you need to give your plants a really good drink. The other thing is if you don't have a skewer, most people have spaghetti. Stick your spaghetti in there. You can leave it for 10 minutes, pull it out. You will know for sure that it's way too wet and you don't need to water it if you forget your spaghetti because it gets so wet when you go to pull it out, the wet part stays in your pot and the rest comes out. The other option is when you use spaghetti, you can just break it off and you've still got something to keep on going for a long time. So anyway, that's just another idea of things that you can do if you don't have a lot of area. Looks great on a patio or a balcony. And that's the herb pot. Hi, it's Candace with Grow Local. Little tiny tidbit on basil. I know everybody, or almost everybody, absolutely loves basil and they want it to grow really healthy and they want it to grow really well. Um, did you know you can get more bang for your buck with your basil? Because when it grows, it grows with two leaves opposite each other. And it continues to grow that way. But when it gets four sets of leaves, all of a sudden it decides, oh, nope, I've got enough leaves. It's time for me to start producing flowers, like this one's got. This is an African blue basil. And the weather in the greenhouse has been absolutely lovely, so it's going, I've grown enough. Time for me to make flowers and start the next generation. But you don't want to do that. So what you do is you go back down to the next set of, the last set of, oh, I needed pruners for this, you guys. Sorry, it's going to be more of a tear. But you pinch it off, OK? You can use the flowers in your cooking. You can use them in your salads. You can use all these guys. Or you can pinch the flower off. You've got that little bit left. And you can put it in a little pot of water. I did that with these guys. I pinched it off above my set of leaves. And when I've done that, this stem is going to branch out into two more stems. And it's going to start making more leaves. If you continue to do that, a lot of times you can get 20 liters of loose packed basil leaves. So that's a heck of a lot of leaves. But what I'm going to do with this one is pinch it off, pinch it off. I don't need a whole lot of leaves. It's going to be too much for this little tiny stem to support. But you can put it in a little pot of water, like my little root cup here, and it's going to get roots. And they're lovely, and they're long. And I'm going to plant it up, and now I've got another basil plant. So if you want, and it's early enough in the season, for me, it's been a crazy, and I'm sure with you, it's been a crazy, cool, cool spring. It's not ready to go outside yet. 
so they're getting kind of leggy so all I've been doing is pinching them back potting them up and I'm going to have a whole lot of little plant babies that I can put out in the garden when it gets warmer so again every time you pinch it you're going to start getting two new branches coming off and that's going to give you way more leaves so it's kind of a feel good and something to know and you can keep them shorter and bushier around by your tomato plants because we all know growing basil near tomatoes helps improve their vigor and their flavor so happy munching you guys enjoy your basil